Hey guys, we are back with some more Wolfsburg Wolves franchise mode, and in this one, we have the free agency, the second half of free agency, as we did go out in the last one and signed Gino Malkin. He's obviously 38, bottom six forward, but he's still got that 85, and given his performance last year, which 42 goals, most of them came in the first half of the season, of course, but he also had 15 in the playoffs. He was absolutely clutch. So I'm hoping we can get him back. And now, there are a couple of trades we need to make, but I didn't go over either of them in the last one. No, we're not going to be going to get Hampus Lindholm or Hayden Flory, as there is one defenseman on the block who I didn't notice in the last one. As you'll take a look at Carolina, Hayden Flory isn't on the block, and I wouldn't imagine they would want to trade away Flory anyway, since... He's kind of a part of their core, and they don't really have any stud defensemen, so they definitely would need that depth. So I don't see any reason why they would want to trade Florian, especially since they just signed him to a contract. Same thing goes for Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa Bay is a little bit more understandable since they are they didn't make the playoffs last year, so maybe they think about giving up Lindholm, but that's a lot of value right there. And his contract goes for four years as well. He's 31. I don't know when he turns 32, and I don't know if he's already dropped down to a top four. So that's kind of a risky play there. But what isn't a risky play is going over to Philly, who are apparently rebuilders now. And look at who they have on the block. Sandheim and Provorov. Ivan Provorov, 28 years of age, 87 overall, $6.3 million in salary for the next two years, is on the block for the Philadelphia Flyers. So we are going to be trying to trade for him. So 30 points for Provorov in the past season. Not too shabby. 155 shots. So he's a mixture of a playmaker and shooting defenseman. Obviously, that was on the top pair. He will be on our top four, obviously, with Kuleshov and Jones being on the top two. And... In terms of hits, he gets a lot of hits, he blocks shots, and he had a little rough of a takeaway to giveaway ratio last year, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, because other than this past year, he's been pretty good in the simulation. Uh, not this year so much either, but he only has an odd year, maybe once every five years it looks like, so I'm going to hope that he rebounds from this past year of that takeaway to giveaway ratio. And plus, given that he's an 87 overall, I, I think he'll be worth it. And we're also going to throw a third in there. Now, who will be going the other way is Gustav Zhamnov. So Zhamnov will be replacing Provorov. And Zhamnov, it makes sense why uh, Philly might want him, as he's 22 years of age, he's pretty young, and... He hasn't really been the greatest simulator. However, uh, maybe that warrants a change of scenery for Gujamnov. Maybe he just needs a change of scenery. And it very well could be. We'll see what happens for Jamnov in Philadelphia. And also going the other way will be a goaltender, Pascal Lavasser, who we just picked in the past draft, second round. And he's got some pretty good value on him. So Jamnov and Lavasser... For Provorov and a third from Philadelphia, proposed trade, trade accepted. We believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in Philadelphia. All right, well, we believe this will contribute to our success as well. And now, going over to the Nashville Predators. They are also in rebuilding mode. So even though we faced them in the playoffs, I believe, this past season, it appears they're in, uh, in rebuilding mode at this point. They do have a franchise goaltender in Ro Ro Rositas. <laughs> uh, he's 21 years of age, though. Uh, 61 overall. So we'll see what he turns out to be. However, they also don't have a top defenseman. They have Niku. But Smoskowitz is their best prospect here. So they don't exactly have a future on the back end. Especially with Schmidt at home getting up there in age. And then Niku is... 28, he's maxed out at 85. They have Smoskowitz, which is nice. Left-handed defenseman. However, I think they could use another one. They could use another elite defenseman. And that would be my man Warren Barney. He's an 81 overall for us. So he'd be 
he would definitely slot into their lineup day one. He only played 15 games for us. We didn't use him in the playoffs. He's not going to get the opportunity this year, especially with Provorov now being in the lineup. So, yeah, Barney to the Nashville Predators. They want him. And we are going to be getting back Vincent Trocek. 31 years of age, two years left on a $6.7 million deal. However, we are going to be retaining 50% of his salary. As we take a look at Trocek's stats, uh, he's a first-line forward, so we're going to have a bunch of depth at center. That, this means Pablo Pearson gets bumped down to the fourth line with Rupe Hintz and Stahlberg, and then I think Furland, that would mean, is our 13th forward. As we take a look at Trocek's history here, and he's... Great hitter. He's not so much at face-offs. Maybe we can work on that with him. Uh, he's got great takeaway to giveaway ratio. He's got a, he's a great defensive center. And obviously, he's a first-line forward. We're not going to be using him on the first line. We're going to be using him on the third line. Uh, or second line, depending on what happens. But uh, he'll start out the year on the third line. He'll also get first-line penalty kill. He may even get power play. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, Trocek for half of his salary... And a third round pick just for the cherry on top. So Barney for Trocek at half his salary and a third proposed trade. Trade accepted. I am happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Nashville Predators. And we consider it a done deal. So there you go. There are your offseason moves for the Wolfsburg Wolves. We went to the Stanley Cup Finals twice in the past two years. Not too shabby, but... We never were able to get over that final hump of being the Stanley Cup champions, which we have not been at this point. So that's why I think getting Vincent Trocek has some really nice center depth and then getting another experienced defenseman in Ivan Provorov, that's going to definitely help us out. Now, as far as our uh, issue with... Defensemen, it's a good issue to have because we have a we have four young defensemen who are NHL ready right now. Country Attack, Bohinski, Staples, and Vertanen. Now, Staples, because he's left-handed, is going to be on the top six as he is our only other left-handed defenseman besides Kuleshov and Provorov, who are both left-handed as well. Jones is a righty. We know that much. But Country Attack, Bohinski, and Vertanen are all righties. So these three are going to have to battle out for a regular spot. So Kondratek, the two-way defenseman, capable of getting points. He had 13 in 73 games last year and 79 hits. So he's he does a little mixture of everything, really. He didn't have too bad of a giveaway to takeaway ratio at 73 blocks. So we'll see what he does in his sophomore season. Now, Tim Bohinski, this guy was a surprise as he started out last year as a 71 and he grew all the way up to an 80 in like half a season, <laughs> 20 goals and 54 points in his first AHL season, 213 shots. We'll see if that translates to the NHL as an offensive defenseman. Obviously, he doesn't hit. Uh, we haven't seen him at the NHL level yet, but I would guess that if he doesn't hit at the AHL level, then he's definitely not going to hit at the NHL level either. Uh, but that being said, he does have some good attributes to him, some good stats as well. Uh, Takeaway to giveaway ratio is really good, especially for an offensive defenseman. So he's getting it done there and not turning the puck over too much. He's got that 92 offensive awareness, 89 passing. We're going to see what this guy can do in the power play. And Hanu Vertanen, the defensive defenseman. So we have a good mixture with the guys who are p competing for a spot on the defensive core next year. One offensive defenseman, one defensive defenseman, and then one guy who does a little bit of everything. So obviously, Hanu Vertanen, 87 hits in 54 games played. Didn't have the greatest giveaway to takeaway ratio. He gets a few blocks as well. So... It's really just a matter of do you want to do you need more offense or you need more defense. If you need more offense, then you could put Tim Bohinski in there, and if you need more defense, you could put Hanover Tannen in there, and then Kondratek obviously is good in all situations. And as far as forwards go, we have Aho, Homer, Mayer, Trocheck, Point, Gryanov, Miller. Now I do want to keep an eye on Miller with his top six 
for potential. If that drops down to a top nine, then we might have to consider trading him, considering that he still has two years left on his deal. And I don't know. I'm, I, again, I'm not sure when he's going to drop, but if he does at any time this season, then we're going to have to seriously consider trading him uh, as he, again, does have quite the contract there, $5.6 million for the next two years. Yeah, Aaron Zanetti, he's perfect the way he is right now. 83 overall. Uh, he's still in his minor league deal. Uh, that is going to change as of next year, though. So we got to <laughs> make sure we take advantage of all those minor league deals while they're still on them. Uh, Michael Furland will be, I believe, our 13th forward. Rupens, Pablo Pearson, and Frederick Stahlberg. And then in terms of goaltenders, you have Thatcher Demko and Calais Rodin, who I expect to make the NHL jump next year. He's currently a 78. He started this year as a 76. So if that growth pattern continues, then I expect him to be at least an 80 overall by the start of next season. So he'll get his chance as a backup goaltender. And as far as the AHL goes, well, we have Knight, but he's only a 56 overall. So I guess for the sake of having three goaltenders, we'll sign Knight. But uh, I would like to... That being said, go after a goaltender in free agency. But I guess we could do that uh, come the preseason because the goaltenders are a lot cheaper. Uh, well, free agents in general are a lot cheaper at that point in time. So that'll really be about it. As long as we're within the amount of contracts, then that we should be all set, which I believe we are. Yeah, we have 28 contracts out of 50. And there it is. Gino is back here in Wolfsburg. Hopefully he doesn't drop from an 85 overall. Maybe he'll drop to like an 84, but I don't think he will drop too much just because, again, the phenomenal season that he had last year. I think the statistical growth should still be applied to him. He might, again, he might drop one or two points, but he will still be a serviceable, more than serviceable NHL forward. So I'm glad we got him back. All right, so we are here in the preseason of year number eight. Let's take a look at the growth. So roster moves, and let's see what's going on here. Goaltenders. Demko, 90, and there it is, Rodine, 81. So he has officially made the jump to the NHL. Welcome to the show, kid. Glad I didn't give up on him. Uh, defenseman, Kuleshov, 90. Jones, 89. Provorov, 87. Staples, 81. Kundratek, 81. Vertanen, 81. Bohinski, 80. So, what's unfortunate is we're not seeing much development out of these four guys in Staples, Kundratek, Vertanen, and Bohinski. Well, I mean, obviously, Bohinski grew a lot <laughs> over the course of this past season, so I guess it's kind of understandable that he didn't get the offseason jump. But these three guys, Staples, Ver Kundratek, and Vertanen, they've been growing really slow. I mean, Staples is only 20, fair enough. Kondratek and Vertanen are already 22, though. And Kondratek, I believe, was an 81 last year. Vertanen, I think, was an 80, so he grew one overall. So we'll see what happens this season when these guys hopefully get more of a stable, get more of a stable role than they had last year. Especially guys like... Uh, Bohinsky, well, Bohinsky wasn't on the main roster last year, but Hanu Vertanen, I believe, only played 50-something games. Yeah, 54. Uh, Kondratak, he played most of the games, but not a full season. Yeah, 73. And I don't believe he got injured. Uh, Carl Staples, he only played 67 games. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, how these guys grow, how mainly how these four guys grow uh, throughout the year and going into next season as well. Because if they don't grow by next year, then I wouldn't say they're growing. It's just, it feels that way because it's, <laughs> they're just growing so slow. So Aho stayed at a 90. Very nice. Homer down to an 87, unfortunately. He had a bit of a rough go last season, especially in the first half. Picked it up towards the end, but uh, nonetheless, he doesn't get any growth. Hopefully he can pick it up again this year. Todd Mayer with the 86. Looks like he's kind of plateauing at 86. That's fine with me. He is a great playmaker, a great defensive forward as well. Vincent Trocek down to an 85. That's fine with me. <laughs> He's going to be on the third line anyway. Uh, Braden Point, 85 as well. 
Zanetti is up to 184 now, so he might actually be an official second liner. Actually, there's a there's a very good chance he'll be a second liner this year. However, we do have Gurianov, we do have Miller still, so we we have a lot of options here when it comes to our lines, four lines. We really do. And then Gino is down to an 83, as I expected. I didn't expect him to drop to like an 80 or anything, because he wasn't at 85 before, and he did have that phenomenal season last year. Uh, but I would imagine going down to an 83 is just from the natural regression because he definitely still has that statistical growth from last year. So Hintz, 82, Furland, 82, Stahlberg, 81, Pablo Pearson, 81. Yeah, he's not really getting any growth. He's already 24, so he's getting bumped down to the fourth line, but still, good fourth liner. He got 20 goals last year, so <laughs> I as long as he's... Doing what he needs to do. Solid fourth liner. So let's see what the computer has for the lines. It's saying Mayer, Aho, and Homer. Zainetti, Malkin, Gurianov, Miller, Trocek, Furland, Point, Hintz, and Stalbert. Point on the fourth line. Huh, okay. Well, uh, let me just rearrange the lines the way I see them, and we'll be right back. All right, so here are the lines for the start of year number eight. Miller, Aho, and Homer staying together. Miller... Hasn't lost his top six potential as of yet, at least that we know of, so we'll keep an eye on that. Todd Mayer, Braden Point, Gurianov staying together from the playoffs. Gino, Trocek, and Zanetti on the third line, and then the fourth line hits Pearson, Stahlberg. So Furland is the one scratched. Defensively, Kuleshov and Jones, no surprise there. Provorov and Kundratek, and then Staples and Vertanen. So Bohinski is the one starting out uh, scratched as Carl Staples doesn't really do much hitting. So I decided to put him with Vertanen and Kondratek with Provorov as Kondratek, I believe, is the most ready for the top four and uh, out of any of the out of any of the four guys who are vying for a roster spot in in Kondratek, Staples, Vertanen, and Bohinski. He's definitely the most ready for the top four, especially being six foot five, two hundred thirty one pounds. He's a monster. So. We'll see what he does there with Provorov. As far as the power play goes, Mayer, Aho, and Zainetti with Trocek and Kuleshov. And then Gurianov, Point, and Homer with Jones and Provorov. For my power play, Aho, Zainetti, Kuleshov, and Jones. Point, Homer, Provorov, and Kondratek. Penalty kill, Trocek, Miller, Staples, and Jones. Hits, Stahlberg, Provorov, and Vertanen. So I'm giving... Alexander Kuleshov a little bit of a rest on the penalty kill because he's been an absolute tank <laughs> for us the past seven years. So I figured since we now have Provorov, someone who's capable of playing the, the penalty kill as well, I, I also wanted to give Staples and Vertan a little bit of responsibility to help them develop a little bit. So we'll be giving Kuleshov a, a much-deserved rest whenever we're on the penalty kill. And... Three-man penalty kill, Trocek, Staples, Jones, Hintz, Provorov, and Kondratek. Four on four, Aho, Zanetti, Kuleshov, Jones. Point, Homer, Provorov, Kondratek, Trocek, Mayer, Staples, Vertanen. Three on three, Aho, Zanetti, Jones. Point, Homer, Kuleshov, Trocek, Mayer, and Provorov. Extra attackers, Aho and Trocek. Shootout, Gino, Aho, Homer, Kuleshov, and Guryanov. Goaltenders, Demko and Rodin, and then of course scratched Arferland and Bohinski. So there we go. There are the start of your year eight lines for your Wolfsburg Wolves. But before we start out the simulation, we'll take a look at the AHL lines real quick. Got Johan Carlson in there. You got uh, Matthias Albrecht, Caden Cummins, who we just drafted, Matteo McCormick as well. Again, we just drafted, and Johan Raquel as well. And then on defense, of course, you got Edgar Castles, who's a 77, so not quite ready for the NHL, but he's definitely getting there, so he'll stay in the AHL for one more year at least. Uh, Skotka, Baranek, Wolf, and then Yaras, I believe his name is, Roman Yaras. We drafted him in the sixth round of this past draft, offensive defenseman. We'll see how fast he, he grows. And then, of course, you got Sandstrom and Peyton Knight, who, again, we just drafted in the past 
draft in the fifth round. So we're going to see what he can do as the backup goaltender behind Felix Sandstrom, who is not signed to an NHL contract. He is signed by the Berlin Bears, not by your Wolfsburg Wolves. So we'll see how Sandstrom and Knight can work down there in the AHL. And there you go. There are all the lines for the organization to start out the year. Let's just check out the captains to make sure everything is good to go. So Aho is the captain. Homer Kulishov the alternates. Now, uh, before we get into it, I just want to make sure that all of our scouts are where they need to be. Because this game is kind of notorious for having scouts that are not very good at their jobs. Regardless of the grades that they have. Even if they're an A+, they still sometimes don't scout the top prospects until the very last minute. <laughs> so, let's see. QMJHL, OHL. Uh, hold on, let's sort by region here. Russia, Liga, SHL, Extra Liga, NLA, DEL, US East, US Central, US West, Q, O, Dub, AHL Atlantic, North, Central, and Pacific, NHL Atlantic, NHL Metro, Central, and Pacific. We're all set. So before we continue, just letting you guys know, we are signing Callum Booth as a third-string goaltender. We may have him in the AHL, we may not. I may just leave him up on the NHL roster just to replace uh, goaltenders whenever there's an injury. But I don't think it'll be a big deal, so we're getting Callum Booth anyway for the AHL. All right, so we went 5-2 and two in the preseason. Not too bad, but we're going over here to the regular season. Game number one against Florida. And uh, just to let you guys know before we get into the regular season, the injury slider is up to seven as it was, uh, I believe, 10 or 12 last season and we were getting way too many. And then for the playoffs, we turned it down to five and we got none. So we're going to see what seven does. We could see if we can find a happy little medium in between too many injuries and and literally none. So, here we go. Game number one against the Florida Panthers. Let's do it. Let's see what we have. So, first period. That'll be a goal by Moreau on Demko. Moreau, they're... Oh, yeah, their first overall pick, Antoine Moreau. Jeez. Getting his first goal in his first game. Congrats, kid. Second period. And there you go. Moreau again. Jeez. And then Aho, Airpunk Tat, and Deskaryanov on Merz Merzlikens. Yep, there we go. And third period. So Florida wins four to three. Guryanov on Merzlikens, but Kyle Paul Mary twice on Demko for the four to three Florida win. Alright, so we're gonna continue the simulation up to Toronto, and then we will go into the game and view it in the third period against Toronto, and we'll end off the episode there. Okay, so to start the season, we are 6-2-1 and one in the first nine games. Not too shabby. You had a loss there against Florida, and then a 3-2 win against San Jose, 4-3 overtime loss against Anaheim, 5-3 win against the Rangers, 4-3 win against Edmonton, 3-0 win against the Sabres, 5-4 overtime win against the Carolina Hurricanes, 2-1 overtime win against the St. Louis Blues, and a 4-2 loss against the Vegas Golden Knights. So now we have the Toronto Maple Leafs coming up, but before that, we are going to check the stats as we will end off the video on the game against Toronto. So Aho with nine points, Guryanov, Kulishov, Point, and Homer, all with seven points. So Homer, still not really much of a goal scorer, but he's getting the points. So I, as long as he doesn't slow down, that's fine by me. Aaron Zanetti with six, Trocek, Gino, Jones, Mayer, all with five, Miller, Vertanen, Vertanen, wow, uh, Miller and Vertanen with four, Hints with three, Provorov with two, Pearson with two, Stahlberg, Staples, Kondratek, all with two as well, and uh, Ferland and Bohinski have not played, so anyone who has played a game this season has at least two points, not too shabby, let's see, shots, so Grianov, Zanetti leading the way with 26 and 27. Trocek and Aho with 24. Homer with 22. Jones with 21. Malkin with 19. Kulishov 17. Provorov 14. Stahlberg with 14. Miller with 13. Mayer with 12. 
for Tannen with 11, Pearson with 11, Point with 10, Kundratek with 10, Hints with 8, and Staples with 6. Shooting percentage, who's at the top? That'd be Kuleshov with 23.5. Uh, power play points, Point has 3. Face-offs, Point with a 52.3. Aho at a 46.4. Huh. Uh, 43.6 for Trocek and a 41.2 for Pablo Pearson. What is going on there? Huh. That's, that's interesting. Only Braden Point is above a 50% out of all of our normal face-off takers. Even Jorg Aho, 46? That's unusual for him. He's usually, yeah, he, I mean, 46... Those are the kind of numbers he would have had in his first or second season. <laughs> Last season, he had 54%. So that's... He needs to work on that for sure. Uh, Trocek, I expect better out of. I, I thought he would at least be at a 50%. Or, or 49. But no, 43 so far. That's a yikes. 41 for Pablo Pierce. And I don't know where that, how that happened after three straight seasons of... At least 51%, getting towards 40, 52 as well for all three of these seasons. And now 41 to start the season. That's not good at all. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and even for hints, the 14 faceoffs he's taken, he's only won five. So, I'm not too sure what's going on there. But hopefully that's that sort of just fixes itself so that we don't have to worry about that. Hits, Jones with 21. Miller with 19, Provorov with 17, Trocek with 14, Kundratek with 13, Gurianov with 12, Bertan and Aho with 9, uh, Stahlberg with 8, Hintz with 7, Zanetti with 7, Mayer with 7, Pearson with 7, Homer with 7, uh, Kuleshov with 6, Point with 4, Staples with 3, Malkin with 2. Giveaways to takeaways, let's see. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Takeaway master Todd Mayer in nine games has 21 takeaways. What an absolute beast to two giveaways. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Worth the $7 million for sure. Even if he doesn't get, uh, what do you have last season? 50 points. Even if he doesn't get to like 60 points this year, which I expect him to, but if it doesn't, as long as he keeps this ratio for takeaways to giveaways, I can't complain. <laughs> Jones with a 7-7, seven to seven, that's good for him. Trocek, even. Homer, good. Hits, good. Miller, bad. 6-11, to 11. that's a yikes. Aho, 6-3. Actually, let's check Miller potential. Okay, good. He still has a top 6. Good, just wanted to check. Uh, Zanetti, 5-6. to six. Gino, 5-10, to 10. that's rough. Guriano, 5-3. to three. Staples, 3-8. Three to eight. Kuleshov, 3-5. Provorov, 2-4. Pablo Pearson, 2-5. That's rough. Point, 1-2. Could be better. Kundratek, 1-6. Vertanen, 1-9. And Stahlberg, 1-4. Any fights? Yeah, Stahlberg, Mayer, Ajo, and Jones. With fights so far this season. In nine games as well. So, starting out uh, a little frustrated are your Wolfsburg Wolves. Thatcher Demko with a 916 save percentage and Rodin, unfortunately, with an 846 in one game. He did win that game, but uh, it looks like he had a little bit of a rough go there. Well, actually, it was only two goals allowed, so it, you know what? It must have been, yeah, it must have been a relief. Actually, is is goalie rotations on? It's probably not, because <laughs> that five goals against per game in uh, in one game with only two goals allowed means he didn't play the full game. Let's see. Uh, yeah. All right. There we go. <laughs> Auto rotate goalies back on. So uh, glad I caught that early, as I usually do. And now we will go into the team stats to see. If we're struggling anywhere, but we're 6-2-1, and one, so I wouldn't imagine there's too much of an issue. Uh, goals for per game, we are third in our division, 3.33. Goals against per game, we are third in our division, 2.78. So Minnesota's way, way up there at a 1.89. So they'll probably come back down to earth. 
as we're second in the division, then, uh, yeah, the Central Division just looks rough <laughs> in general. Uh, we, we did have a weak division last year, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's more or less the same this year. Uh, power play, actually uh, not off to a bad start. 25% on 20 opportunities. Let's see, penalty kills, 75% on 24 opportunities. Definitely could be better. We'll see uh, what happens there over the next month for sure. But So you might want to change the penalty kill going into next month, but that's really all I can think of because we're 6-2-1 and one right now. There's not too much to change. So now we're going to get into this game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Then we'll call it an episode. All right, here we go. Third period against the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're up 2-1. We had a goal by Mayer and a goal by Stahlberg. Let's hope we can finish this off. And oh, hold on. No overhead. I did not want overhead. I changed it to true broadcast. What the heck is going on? There we go. True broadcast. I don't know why that didn't save. <laughs> it's, let me just make sure it's set to three minutes as well. Nope, it's set to five. Okay, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened. I remember <laughs> changing it to three minutes and true broadcast because I just did it like a minute ago. And for some reason, the settings changed themselves. So uh, back in it now. So Toronto down by one. They're looking for something here. Number 98 circling around. Over to Riley. Riley with the shot and Demko with the save. Finds around the boards by Kuleshov. Up to Aho. Aho into the zone. Looking at his options. Finds Homer in front. Homer tried to get the rebound into the corner. Battles for it. Still has it. And though, what a shot by Maddox Homer as it trickles by the Toronto goaltender. And we are up 3 1 now in the third period. Off a kind of a broken play by Maddox Homer as it looked like he was about to get a rebound, but the puck bounced into the corner. But he works that corner, and he just shoots it short side, and it goes under the arm of the Toronto goal Thunder Humphreys. And we're off to a 3-1 lead to start this third period. So first line still out there. Miller, Aho, and Homer against Oduya, Matthews, and Nylander. Oduya now from Riley. Gets into the zone. Looks at his options, winds it around the boards. Aho will get there. Aho takes it up for Wolfsburg, finds Miller. Miller dances into the zone, finds Jones for Homer. Homer again, looking for another one. That's number 77 for the Toronto Maple Leafs, takes it up. Welsh gets it from Matthews around the net, looking at his options, finds Riley. Riley down low for Welsh. Welsh for Oduya in front with the backhander, and Demko will cover that one up. Mayor, Point, and Guryanov out there against Krebs, Tavares, and Welch. Face off one by Wolfsburg, and Point <laughs> will have to take his own push there as none of his wingers helped him out. And Point tried to find Mayor there, but taken by Tavares. And number 31 for Toronto, Welch. Circles back. Finds Honka for Orlov. Orlov with the shot and Demko with the glove. No problem for him as Kuleshov will take it up for Wolfsburg. And into the zone. Kuleshov pinned along the boards and he was forced to get rid of it. But Mayer keeps it in the zone. Kuleshov to Guryanov with the shot. He scores as well. It is now 4-1 in favor of the Wolfsburg Wolves. Off a shot by Guryanov from the slot. On Humphreys. And what a nice goal that was. Started off a... Uh, once again, a bit of a broken play as Kuleshov was pinned along the boards. He had to kick it out to the center of the ice. And then he goes back to the point. And makes sure that puck gets on the stick of Guryanov. And Guryanov puts it home. I believe that was 5-hole. Pass Humphreys. So, now 4-1. If ever the Wolfsburg Wolves, Mayor Point and Gurianov still out there. It's Erickson, Donato, and Weinhandel. Donato wins that back to Orlov. Orlov up to Weinhandel. Weinhandel finds no one, finds Gurianov instead. Provorov, newest acquisition for the Wolfsburg Wolves. 
Mayer receives a pass, but Hanka will intercept that pass over to, I believe that would have been Gurianov. Donato, Erickson, circles around, finds number 15 on the point, and Demko with the absolute fantastic save. Gino, Trocek, and Zanetti out there against Erickson, Donato, and Windhandle. Face off, one by Toronto. Hanka to Winehandle. But Malkin intercepts. Malkin into the zone. Malkin. Shot. And up free saves. Trocek with the face off on Matthews. And Trocek will win that back for Kondratek. Kondratek with the shot, and that went just wide, and Humphreys forced to cover up with Trocek standing right there. Kondratek number two, as I believe he had a different number last year, actually. Not positive, <laughs> but I don't remember him being number two. So one back once again by Wolfsburg, but taken instead by Oduya from the Toronto Maple Leafs, number 98. He sends it back for Honka. It's back from Matthews. Honka walks in and he snipes that one. Oh my. Honka, the defenseman, just rips it. We have a 4 2 game now with 139 remaining in the third. Anthony Honka. <laughs> that, that was just quite the shot there, bud. Yeah, he just walks in. Jeez. So, Gino, Trocek, and Zanetti still out there. Face off one by Matthews. Zaitsev. If the zoner tried to go into the zone, would have been offside, I believe. Toronto pulling their goaltender. Oduya with the shot. Blocker saved by Demko. Back for number 12. He winds around the boards. Finds Gino. Gino, Provorov. Trocek takes it out of the zone. Tries to get it past. Can he? Can he retain possession? He does. He's got to kick it along. What's going to happen here with Miller? Trocek. Zaitsev takes it now. Oh, man. <laughs> Toronto's battling for that puck. Tavares. To Welch. To Tavares. Tavares. Kudratek. The puck's bouncing all over the place. <laughs> Provorov. Miller has it now. He gets body checked. And Miller misses the empty net. My goodness. <laughs> all that hype. And Miller misses the empty net again. Oh my goodness, you're getting traded. Oh my goodness, we're missing empty nets like crazy. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is a joke, right? This is... <laughs> oh my god. I don't think I've ever seen... <laughs> if that's not proof that the empty net glitch doesn't exist, I don't know what is. <laughs> That was ridiculous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Kuleshov finally gets it. After what? Well, l l let's see here. Was that like six? <laughs> five, six, or even seven empty net opportunities that just go wide? <laughs> I mean, it starts right here with JT Miller. As we see... He takes the first shot from the neutral zone. Fine. Fair enough. You can understand why he might miss that as it's not uh, in in the offensive zone. But here with Maddox Homer, he's right on the boards. <laughs> he has a backhand shot. He manages to pass it to JT Miller once again, who misses it on the backhand. <laughs> not even, what is that? Probably not even 10 feet from the net. Backhands it, misses, goes wide. Ajo also misses on his forehand. <laughs> How many was that? Was that three? Yeah, that's th number three for Ajo. Uh, Kondratek, number four. Let's see, what is this now? Number five for Kuleshov goes wide. <laughs> and then Kondratek again goes wide. And Kuleshov finally on the seventh attempt. <laughs> buries it. Oh my goodness, EA Sports. <laughs> Seven attempts. Seven attempts for the empty net. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Unreal. Alright, at least we get, we got the win. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Oh my goodness.
God, yeah. <laughs>